question and answer session with Animal Care, and we are so excited because today we're actually going to be cooking with Kelly. Not Kelly Geck, but Kelly McKinnis. We have two Kellys in Animal Care. And we are so pumped because she's going to help us take care of some of our exhibit animals today and help us make some food for them. I think we're running a little bit late, so let's see if she's here ready for us. All right, come on. Hey, Kelly. Hey, Amber. How are you today? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing great. Awesome. Well, we're really excited. We have our question and answer with Animal Care audience here today. And would you mind telling them just what you do at the museum? Yeah. So my name is Kelly McKinnis. I'm one of the Animal Care Associates here at the Cook Museum of Natural Science in Decatur, Alabama. And I help take care of all of our animals every day, feed water, clean up after them. And I mainly work with our ectotherms. Awesome. So what do you got for us today? What are we doing? We are going to prepare some food for our ectotherms and feed them this morning. Sweet. All right. Can we go inside? Yes, let's do it. Cool. All right. <laughs> All right. You ready to get started? Yeah. We are going to prepare some food for our ectotherms on exhibit today. Awesome. So we went over a little bit in Sarah's video on terrapins about what a what an ectotherm is, but can you tell our audience what an ectotherm is as a reminder? Yeah, so an ectotherm is any animal, most people think of reptiles like a turtle, that will use the environment to keep themselves warm or cool themselves down. So a turtle will actually bask on a log or find a shady spot if they're too hot or too cold. In comparison, mammals are endotherms and they will have like a fur coat or they will sweat or shiver to keep themselves warm or cool themselves down. Gotcha, nice. So we have quite a few ectotherms here at the museum. Who yes. are we feeding today? Well, today we're gonna feed our chuckwalla and our box turtle. But first I do wanna mention a couple of our other ectotherms on exhibit because we do have some carnivores like our Mexican alligator lizard and our Eastern collared lizard. So what we do with them is we will actually count out each individual prey item for them. And our terrapins will actually count out individual pellets for them to eat. So you guys count all the food that you feed every one of your animals? Yes, every cricket and every pellet. Whoa, so how do we count this food today? We're actually gonna weigh it. So we have our food scale here. So nice. we'll start with our chuckwalla. Yeah. So he gets four and a half grams of mustard greens. Okay. Four and a half grams is a special veggie mix that we make here in house some pellets and a calcium supplement. So you want to start cutting up some mustard for me? I get I get to actually... Yeah, absolutely. Cooking with Kelly, here we That's go. That's a sharp knife, be careful. Gotcha, thank you. Awesome. So, Kelly, mm -hmm. we're feeding the Chuckwalla mustard greens today. Yes. Does he always get mustard greens? Actually, no, he gets a different green every day. So today he's getting mustard greens. Yesterday, he actually got some kale. Kale is, has a good source of iron and potassium. Uh, tomorrow, he may get some spinach, which is a good source of beta carotene for him, and he will convert that into vitamin A. Good. That looks great. Sweet. So now our chuck wallet is done, so we'll set this aside. And next, we can work on our box turtle. So he has a similar diet that we've weighed out. Uh, first, he gets five grams of mustard greens. Next, he gets three grams of zucchini, two grams of banana. Banana is his favorite. And he also gets some of those same pellets. Box turtles are actually an omnivore, so they also need a source of protein. So today we have two super worms for him. And then last is his calcium supplement. Whoa. Okay, so we just poured some calcium onto both the chuckwalla and the box turtles food. Mm -hmm. Why do we use calcium? Animals need calcium just like we do. We need calcium to have strong bones. Animals need the same thing. So we give them calcium in their food. We also give them ultraviolet light in their enclosure. They'll take the UVB rays out of that light and convert it to vitamin D3. And that allows them to absorb this calcium that we're giving them. Awesome. So the, the UV light that you place in their enclosure is kind of like what they would get in the natural world, right? From the sunlight? Right. It mimics their sunlight. Awesome. And then you guys have such specific diets for every one of your animals. Yes. How do you guys come up with each diet? Well, we have a very educated staff that knows a lot about all these different animals. And we also have a veterinarian that comes and helps us figure all this out. 
we take their weights, we see how they're growing, and we decide nice. if they need more food. Awesome. Well, it looks like we're finished, right? Yes. Okay, so should we go see how our chuckwalla judge and our box turtle judge like their food? Yes, I think they're gonna love it. All right, I'll grab this one. You got that one? Got it. Cool. All right, let's go. box turtle eat all that food? Awesome. So we learned a lot about our ectotherms here at the museum from Kelly McInnes, one of our animal care associates. She was mentioning that we actually work with our veterinarian to make sure all of our animals have their specific diet and that all their nutrition needs are met. And our more herbivorous reptiles like the chuckwalla and the omnivorous reptiles like the box turtle, they get specific amounts of each of their food every single day. Our animal care staff does such an amazing job taking care of all their animals. That was really, really cool. I can't wait for the next session of Cooking with Kelly on Question and Answer with Animal Care. We hope you guys tune in. All right, you guys, stay safe. See you later.